Thank you, brother. Hold on. Verse 2. That walk to go down into Egypt. That walk to go down into Egypt. Now, now I bet y'all didn't know this. America is Egypt all over again. Right. I can prove it to you. Hold what you got. Give me Revelations 2 and 8. Here's the problem. This Bible is the, the top of all knowledge. You understand? Listen, uh, my grandma had it too, brother. And she still got it. And guess what? She don't read a damn thing. Because Christians don't care what God says. They just care what pastor says. And the problem is, it wouldn't be a problem if pastor cared what God says. But pastor cares what he says. And that's a lie. Pastor serves that. That false image. Every Christian church is established off of lies. Because the religion of Christianity is a lie. Christianity is paganism infused with the culture of the real Hebrews. And I'm going to show you right here in the Bible. All right, brother. I'm going to show you right here in the Bible that America is Egypt all over again. Read. Two and eight. This is the book of Revelation, chapter two and eight. That's talk about what love. Don't sweat. And unto the angel of the church in Samaria, write these things say the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Right, now go to verse nine. I know thy works and tribulation. The Bible says, I know thy works and thy tribulation. The Lord is talking about his people. And right here, the Bible is describing the conditions of his people. We live in great tribulation as black Hispanics and Native Americans. We suffer things simply because of our race. Have you ever sat and asked yourself, what have black people ever done to the white man for us to deserve the violence that they have committed against our people? Black people have never done to white people what white people have done to black people. When? You don't even know what you're talking about. When? Black people enslaved white people? Yes, that was the first slave. When? Brother, you're going to say what you're going to say. You got to prove it. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Give me, uh, listen. No, I don't. You <laughs> Brother, don't, you don't, I understand. You don't got to prove it. I understand. Listen, it feels so good to talk. And I, I know you've been wanting to talk to us for a second. I understand that. But brother, we serious, brother. Because I'm upset. I, you, and listen, it's nothing wrong with being upset. But, brother, have some, have some decor. Excuse me. Excuse it's nothing wrong with being upset. But the, the problem is... You being upset doesn't change the fact that the white man's a devil. You being upset doesn't change the fact that black men are being murdered in the streets, black women are missing, black children are being molested. You see the problem? If our emotions meant anything, then it would change. But our emotions mean nothing. We have to find out how God feels about everything. Because not only is the Lord upset, he's given us the solution to us being upset the same way he's upset. You should be upset. The Bible says oppression make a wise man mad. You should be mad. You should be upset. The question is now, what are you going to do with that anger? What are you going to do with you being upset? I'm asking you a question. You upset, now what are you going to do to change what's going on? I'm doing it right now. And what is that, Jamal? I'm the people see the truth. What's the truth, Jamal? The truth is, there's too many people out here that Upset, and they're lashing out because they're upset, and that's what you're doing. That's, that's what I'm doing. That's what you're doing. Jamal, it would look like you're the one that's lashing out. I am lashing out. And so you're because a hypocrite. What are, you, what, what are we talking about? It's too many What's going on here, Jamal? It's too many people. It's too many people. I'm enough. You enough. I'm enough. So only you get to be emotional, upset, and lash no, out. But only you can't. I hear you, Jamal. Just stick around, brother. Just stick around. I, I feel you. I feel your pain, that's brother. That's all I'm saying. Keep reading. Hey, I'm saying that nobody, I'm saying Go, go. I know that works. You ain't doing it. And tribulation. And probity. The Bible says God knows his our tribulation, our works, and our poverty. Right. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we live in poverty, man. Do you know other races of people come from third world countries and are astounded about how black people live? You know why? Because we live on the bottom of society. In a first world nation, black people live in third world poverty. How is that? I'll tell you why. Because we are God's people. And he said this would be the case if we didn't follow this moral compass that he's given us in the Bible. This Bible gives us the standard on how to live. And how to conduct ourselves amongst each other. And I agree with you, Jamal, when you say we got to have respect when we talk to each other. The problem is... 
you can't just talk it. If you don't think I have respect when I'm talking, how about you be the example to me? Show me what it looks like to have respect when we're talking. You, do you not agree? I agree. All right, so show, show me. Okay, I'm going to say something. Go ahead. And then you're going to say something. Go ahead. And I'm going to let you finish, and then I'm going to say something. Go ahead. And then you're going to say something. And at some point, we're going to come to a point, a common point. I don't uh, Lord allow we come to a common point, but we build on. we'll see. Now, what you got to say? Okay. I'm listening. Go ahead. Now, come back to me because I was going to say something out of out of vindication. Uh -huh. So I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to come back. Let's go sweat. Is that okay? That's okay, brother. Go ahead. Thank you, brother. Go ahead. Oh, you said come back to you. Yeah, okay, back. no sweat. No sweat. Back. Back. This is what we read right here. The Bible says, I know your poverty. You understand? We are the real Jews according to the Bible. You understand? The Lord sees how we live in the worst conditions, how we live below everybody in society. But guess what? This is what, this, this is what God also says. Keep reading. Oh, God. But there are rich. And I know the And, and, and y'all get Jamal a hand too, man, because it took, it took a, a real man that say, I'm going to humble myself. Straight up, brother. You understand? That's, that's real. And that's what I'm talking about. If we can do that as a people, brother, we will rule the world. You understand? Read what you got. Come and come. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. God says, black man, I, I see you living poverty. I see you living a hard life. I see you working to the bone. But the Lord says, but you rich. Why does the Lord say we rich even though we live in poverty? Because we are the inheritance of his lineage. You understand? Meaning, we are the people that God had promised all the good things on the earth to. And it don't look like that right now because we don't get any of the de delicious things the earth has to offer. Right now, our oppressor lives above everyone else on the earth when it's not supposed to be that way. The Lord always intended for blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to rule the earth. That's why black men have the most compassion Black people will love the people that murder their own people even though every, every other race of people would kill them. You think the white man will suffer what we've been suffering for 400 years? Hell no, man. White people stormed the capital of their own government because they were upset with the results of an election. That's how you know they couldn't even suffer half of what we went through as a people. White people went and stormed the capital. What have black people ever stormed any capital in America? Who? Me. You did? Yes, don't, don't say that, bro. They got cameras out here. Don't, don't incriminate they yourself. What are you talking about? No, no, no sweat. But listen, check this out. They know. They know who I am. We were supposed to do that. Go ahead, brother. Hey, if anything, black people should be the ones tearing it down. Thank you. But listen. Because the goddamn slaves built it up. I hear you, brother. We did build it up. Get that brother a hand. Black people did build America. Here's the problem. If anybody had a claim to tear down any of this, it would be us. Yeah. This is the thing. We shouldn't tear it down. Because what that does is show us to be just as low and violent and barbaric as the people who rule over us. You know the way, to, you know the way for us to tear down America? I got you. And we still don't have nothing. I'm going to tell you, you know the way we tear down America? Stop celebrating the white man's holidays. Stop buying his drugs. Stop loving his women. Stop committing acts of violence against each other when they profit in the justice system. You know how much money they make from black men murdering each other? You know how much money they make when black women kill their own babies in abortion clinic? Like, you ever, give me one second, brother. I feel good. Hold your point for one second. Like, you ever thought about, say it again, billions. You ever thought about that? Like, the white man has convinced us to not only kill our babies, but pay for it to do it. Like, goddamn. Like, we paid $300 to murder our own lineage and legacy. That's how destroyed we are as a people. You never thought about that? That's how we, just imagine if every black woman tomorrow said, we are getting no more abortions. Brother, the entire abortion industry will collapse. And you know what else would have collapsed? The science field. Because most of the science advances that they have come from the stem cell research from the aborted baby cells. You understand? This is the problem with our people. We don't see that the little things that we can do as a people make big change. We think we gotta be violent like the oppressor, and that's not the way to do it, if you could. That's not the way to do it. The way to do it is to have a moral code. 
because these people don't have a moral code. They won't even apologize for what they've done. Tell you, this. you understand? They're not sorry for how people live. I'll tell you this. Go ahead, brother. I want reparations. Do you want reparations? Brother, we getting the reparations right here. Right. Okay. Reparations uh, is not, it won't do anything for what's really owed to us. What's reparations in a country that belongs to us? I mean, we built this nation. Everybody else got their reparations. Hey, Mr. White. But it's the thing. We built this nation. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Let me ask you this. They did. Right. When they freed the slaves, they gave slave masters reparations. Now let me ask you a question. If somebody stole your house and then they gave you a lump sum payment for the house after they stole it, would that be sufficient payment to you? Why not? Hold up, hold up. If somebody stole the house that you built and they lived in that house for decades and their children lived in that house and their children's children lived in that house, and finally, they decide to give you a payment on what they think the house is worth. Is that sufficient payment? Oh, hell no, man. Exactly. Reparations wouldn't do anything for what they really owe us. Brother, at this point, it's not even about money. They owe us in blood, brother. They owe us in blood. And God is going to get the blood that is owed us because that's justice. You understand? It's more than just money about reparations. Brother, what does reparations mean? What does reparations mean? To many different people, it's more than just. But, well, what does the word mean? You, you know, you know. Payment to repair something. Yeah, that's right. So you telling me there's an amount of money or that? What can white people do to repair what they've done to us? And let me ask you that. What can the white race do to repair the 400 years of bloodshed? What that sign at? What a lynching sign? What a lynching and slavery sign? Right Brother, look, just look at these signs. Yeah, I see all the. I, I, I've been seeing all those signs. All right, so let me ask you, what can they do to repair that? You know, reparations. No, 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 no. I understand. Let me ask you. What can they do to repair this? Reparations mean different things to different people. We, that's the problem. Like, 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 Words have meanings. Yeah, yeah, it it yeah. don't matter what it means to different people. We have to go by what the what the word means. You know, Reparation is you know, payment you know, in order to repair something. That's and it's say right. the specific way of payment, but nevertheless, it's a payment to repair. Now, now, I'm asking you, what can white people do to repair the 400 years of this? Say it again, brother. Give the brother a hand. It's at this point, brother, it's nothing they can do. And this is why Christ is going to come back, and he's the one that's going to judge the earth. That's why it's called Judgment Day. Because it's required, their blood is required at this point, brother. I, I, you know they murdered our hey, forefathers and forefathers? Hey, 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 Everybody has, everybody, everybody has their own opinion. Right? That's a problem. We don't talk about our opinions. We talk about God's opinion. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We talk about God's opinion. I mean, his opinion should be the one that matters. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You believe in God? Yeah. Listen, I me do. too. And we talking God's words, God's opinion, not our opinion. Because, and listen, if it was up to me, my old man, I would say, give me an eight ball. And that's for payment for, for the things you've done to my people. You see how destroyed we are? Yeah. If you asked me a couple years ago, I say, well, the white man came to me, well, what do we have to do to repair what we've done to your people? I'm like, nigga, give me an eight ball and we square. But listen, I changed my life as a man learning what God says. And I don't want what I want, I want what God wants. And I can show you what God wants. Give me Revelations 13 and 9. You understand? I'll show you what God wants. The Jews got what they wanted for the Holocaust. Listen, so many and they still things. getting paid for the Holocaust. And there's so many different situations going on you understand? with different people. They still getting paid for the Holocaust. Yeah. Meanwhile, they didn't give black people anything when they yeah. so-called abolished slavery. Yeah, you understand? Black, black people mm -hmm. black people are the most disrespected yep. on earth. Read that. Now, let's just God's opinion on the matter. Go ahead. Oh God, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. God is saying, if any man have an ear, let him hear. This is not referring uh, literally. It's saying any man that can understand this, understand this. Read. He that leadeth into captivity. Read again. He that leadeth into captivity. So God, get that slavery sign on the camera, Bob Kishaw. He that does what? Lead us into captivity. He that lead us into captivity. Our people were led into captivity by the white race. You understand? They did terrible things to black people. You understand? They said the transatlantic slave trade was the worst slave trade in the history of Earth. Because of the things that they've done to our people were unspoken of. 
There are entire black towns that are covered by lakes now because America's trying to hide the heinous history of their people. That's why they don't want to teach critical race theory in the schools because they know just how much of a devil they've been to God's people. Well, this is God's opinion on the matter. I ask you, what, what can they do to repair it? Nothing. But this is what God says he going to do to repair it. Read. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that leadeth into slavery shall go into slavery. It sounds strange to you, but this is what justice sounds like. This is real justice. And we hate to hear it as a people because slaves have been deprived of justice. Slave man. That's why the police, they abuse black men and emasculate us and expect for us to take it. Yes, boy, get, 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 get on your way, boy. You ought to be lucky I let you live. Because slaves are not allowed to feel the emotions of a free man. Well, guess what? The Lord wants us to be free. And justice and anger are emotions of people that are free. That's why white men, they went to their death going against Britain. Because they said, Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. You see that the white man, he stand up for liberty and justice for his people. Because he's free. Black people, whenever we say we want justice and we read what real justice is, then all of a sudden we are a hate group and we racist. No sweat, we don't get some more what God's opinion is. Read. He that live into captivity shall go into captivity. The white man is going to go into slavery for the crimes of his people. And that's justice. You understand? That is absolute justice. When Christ comes back on this earth, Christ is coming back to save his people. You know how Christians always say, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, sanctified, being the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and all that garbage. You ask a Christian, what are you saved from? What is it exactly are you saved from, huh? Nothing. That's the problem. You see how stupid that is? You're right. It don't make no sense. This is what you got to tell them. Christ is coming back to save the people that need saving. Who needs saving? Oh, I was a born again Christian. What is that shit? Yeah, listen, it's, it's a joke, brother. It's a joke. Born again. You're the same nasty Christian you was when you came into church. Because the Christian church doesn't con change our people. This is the thing. The Bible says, he that leadeth into, into captivity shall go into captivity. Keep reading. Don't go. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Now, this might sound like hate speech. But the reason why you think this is hate speech is because you've never heard this in the Bible because your pastor does not teach the Bible. This is real justice. The Bible says, he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And I'm going to show you how hypocritical black people are when it comes to white people. Whenever a brother is gunned down in the streets and he was a brother that was a gangbanger, what do black people always say? Live by the gun, die by the gun. We can accept when we get what we deserve. But whenever we say the white man has to get what he's deserved, oh, brother, that's, uh, that, I don't know, brother, that sounds a little rough there. I don't know if my Jesus and my God want me to feel like that. You are a hypocrite. Because if a black man was gunned down the streets, you would say, live by the gun, die by the gun. Right. He was in the, you know he was in those streets. Well, guess what? You know the white man is the devil. Right. You know he only hung black men. Right. You understand? From trees and poles for no reason. Right. Black men went and served in all their goddamn wars and came back heroes and were lynched in their goddamn uniform. Right. You telling me pray for Ukraine? You telling me join your stinking army? I'll be damned if I join your stinking military, man. When you ain't never respected the sacrifices of black men in uniform. You understand? Keep reading. They not talking about the cross and black people. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. The Bible says, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. I know it's easy to say, let's go storm the Capitol like the white man, and let's go get guns and shoot all every white person we shoot. But that's not what God wants for us to do. God wants us to be patient and knowing that justice is going to be served for our people. The white man is definitely going to pay for his crimes against God's people. The thing is, it's not up to us to lift the finger to do it. The way we get justice is by not following after the white man. You want to see America fall? You want to see the people that murdered our forefathers go down? Don't be like them. Don't get high like the white man. Everybody think black people are drug addicts and the biggest drug dealers. Well, I, brother, I ain't never seen so many drugs in my life being around before 
being around white people. White people are expert drug addicts and drug dealers. You understand? They know all about the, all the different bombs and all the different, you know, I learned about an A-ball from a white boy. Back when, you know, the old man. You understand? They are the drug dealers and the criminals. You understand? Wait, okay, we, you know, black man, he'll smoke a joint and, and drink a beer and go to sleep. And, it, and it's wrong to smoke. But you get around white boys and they show you how to hit a bong and, and from, you know, and put a, you know what I'm saying, all type of putting a beer joint in your butt. And so you can, dude, you know, you, you get drunk faster if you put the funnel in your, in your, in your anus. All type of wild, deviant things, because that's what they are. They are a race of people that are deviant and profane, like the Bible says. And we shouldn't be like them. You know what I'm saying? I, I, every black man, you notice when I said that, even Jamal, you look like, what the hell are you talking about? Why you put that on the broadcast? But I ain't gonna speak on that though. Hey, I, just, I just wanna say my piece. Cause he knows the truth. Listen, he knows the goddamn truth. We ain't up here telling our opinions. This is the facts. This is reality. Your Christian, your Christian pastor, he ain't gonna talk to you in reality. He's gonna talk to you in Jesus' land. You understand? With Jesus' words, when it's not really the words of Christ. We deal in reality, and this Bible deals with the real deal, holy field reality. You understand? We are better than, the, than them as a people. Yeah. You understand? Go ahead, Jamal. Uh, two things. Go ahead. First thing, it was a man. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, I'm making this whole story up, but you should be able to relate. It was a man that got sick on the road, right? And he passed out on the side of the road, right? We're going to say an Asian brother, right? He was on the road, he passed out. And another Asian walked past him. Right? And saying them and kept moving, right? Now, with the Asiatic man, we're gonna say, I'm from Bob Chester, right? We're gonna say it's, it's the year 1995, and an Asiatic from Bob Chester walked past me, and I'm from Bob Chester and kept it moving. But an Asiatic from Connor Turn came past me and helped me up. Do that sound familiar? It sounds like you. It sounds like you just made it up, like you said. You just made it up, right? You just said you just made it up. Okay, boom. Yeah, you just made it up. Now, I know. Here's a, the problem. Hold on, I know. A, Here's the problem. Let me let you speak. Now, did I cut a, you off, Jamal? Hey, a Samaritan. I just cut you off. A Samaritan woman. Did I cut you off? Right. Was walking down the road after a priest just walked past a man on the road. Now you bring up the story of the good Samaritan. Now, what's your point to that? Now, bring up what's your point? It's the same story. Okay, now, now what's your point of telling the story? That's what I'm asking you. My point of telling the story is, you know, this, I had two parts. You make it quick. Now, my, no, 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 now my what's point, the point? My point of telling the story is, right, for a person to cast a curse on another group of people that is not their people, but meanwhile, their own people, they're not... I got you saying. So you saying how that's can we call wrong. how can we call the white man a devil when we the ones murdering each other, right? No, that's not what I'm saying. So what are you saying? Make make bring the point home. I'm saying the the amount of energy that you're putting into it, it 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 casts a shadow over what you're actually getting into. Well that's your opinion because okay, there are no, people out here that are absolutely no one exactly disagree. what I'm talking about. We agree to disagree, right? Now the second thing is Go ahead. we don't have a conversation about reparations. Right. Well, we were, but go ahead. No, we were. We were. Okay, go ahead. We'll go get to the point. Get to the point, Jamal. Now, the so-called white man, I asked him, I said, are you a white man? Mm -hmm. He says, yeah. Right. I say, why do you call yourself a white man? He says, because I grew up in a white community, and they told me that's who I am. Right? I said, are you against paying reparations? He said, no. I said, would you be willing to pay me reparations? Uh -huh. He said, yes. Now, this is where the law Right? Now, I was, speed it up, speed it I up. I was going to say, give me all the money in your pocket. Right? The test them. But I said, give me $2. Is that what happened? And he, pulled, he opened up his wallet and he gave me every dollar in his pocket, which was how much? It was $2. Now, what, now what's your Hold point on. for saying that? My I need point, you to get to the point. My point of saying that is that that conversation right there uh -huh. that happened in every community in the 
Majority of them are scared of it. So that white man giving you $2 needs to peace? Yes. Because now, nobody can say that somebody universally, oh, people are universally white, racist, prejudiced, biased, whatever. So you telling me because a white man gave you $2, Somehow that he makes him scared. a good white man. No, he was no. scared. You see how you take <laughs> all our words? And you and the, okay, so what do you? Uh, that's, that's what I need you to explain. What, what's the point of you telling me all of this? What are you trying to say? Because I'm gonna draw the point that I think you're trying to say if you don't tell me. It sounds like you're saying the white man, this one white man that gave you two dollars, excuses 400 years of slavery, rape, murder, and lies. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Bro, oh, so, I'm 28 years old. What are you saying? Right? Go ahead, Jamar. What are you saying? I'm 28 years old. W what are you saying? I've been arrested multiple times. What's the point? Of them were black. Okay? That so-called white man ain't never disrespected me in his life. Uh-huh. But you... Why, why, why hasn't he ever disrespected you in your life? Why is it that the people that disrespect you are black people? I didn't say that. Then what are you trying to say? You said, see, you you want to make a point, said, but you're doing it passive said, aggressively instead of just saying no. what it is that you're trying to I say. Said, you want us you want us to forgive white people and excuse what they do to us because that, black people do things to other black people. I'm telling you what you want to say. You take it too long to get to the point, and I already know what you're trying to say. You, you want to excuse the white man because he gave you two dollars when he gives. Bums on the median oh, down the street, two dollars. All right, let me ask you. Do Go I ahead. Sound like a type person that can't properly articulate myself. My opinion don't matter on that. I need you to get to the point. What's the point of it all? I know how to say what I'm saying, right? So say what you're I saying. I said it, and you keep taking what I'm saying. So say it again. Make, make it plain. I'm slow. I'm I listen. I apologize. I'm Look, slow. Right? Break it down for me quickly. Okay. Quickly. You out here pumping all this hate whitey shit. Uh huh. Right. Go ahead. Because. They did this and that to us, uh -huh. right? Right. As a, as a people, right. But what you're overlooking is that we are individuals. There's no such thing as a white man. You said we individuals. There's no such thing as a black man. So There's stop, no stop, stop. Now I'm gonna uh, stop. I got you what you're saying. Now let me. Now I'm gonna put you. I'm gonna put what you said to the test. Black man. And if a, a black and man a robbed black a bank white. around the corner so right now, and they said I am looking for a black man. That was 5'10". He's ignorant. All black people are going to be rounded up. Yeah, By that's, that's 5'10". That's 5'10". They're not looking for the specific one. They're looking for those who fit the description. And here's the problem. You want to put an individuality to things that are individual. It is. It's not individual. You think white people look at you different than how they look at me? We both niggas to them. You should. You should. You should. Because we are judged as a people. Yo, it does. I'm and you don't free. see it don't dictate your life. I'm free. Free from what? From that mental slavery right that you had. Like what are you free to do? You're not free, brother. You're not free, and you prove it you're not free. You want to save the white man when he cannot be saved. He cannot be saved, brother. God is going to destroy the white man. He's going to change. And this is this is this is this is something that predates me and you, brother. I know that white man was good to you. He gave you two dollars. Mm -hmm. Love him. Love him all you want. I understand. But what we're talking about, brother, is not you and him. You and Kevin. We're talking about his forefathers and our forefathers.